training is about taking in the action on the backfields and the stars of tomorrow. Spring training is also about seeing a major league game. That's what we're about to do. Baseball, next. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. And this afternoon from Roger Dean Stadium in Jupiter, Florida, it's the new look Atlanta Braves. They make their way to town to take on the St. Louis Cardinals. And welcome to Cardinals baseball. That's the Cardinals Hall of Famer, Jim Edmonds. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Let's jump right into it. Our BJC Healthcare difference maker here this afternoon, his first start of the spring. That's Carlos Martinez. Yeah, I'm interested to see his first start of the spring this year. Huge part of this team. Try to keep him healthy all year, get him out there every fifth day. But it starts today here in spring training. Hopefully just a smooth two innings for him and get him out of there. Jaliz Shashin will get the start today for the Atlanta Braves. For the Cardinals, Carlos Martinez. Big crowd is here. Sun is shining brightly. And baseball comes your way next. Baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser and by the Missouri Lottery. Every ticket you play gives to schools across Missouri. So play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. Freddy Gonzalez, the manager of the Atlanta Braves, received an extension despite the fact that their club went 67 and 95 last year. It's a rebuild, certainly for them. On the other side, Mike Matheny, expectations are high. After a year of 162, their fifth consecutive appearance in the postseason, sixth time in the last seven years. Tough position, Jim Edmonds, when you look at Freddie Gonzalez, where you see a lot of your players traded away and just trying to put out a, a team that's going to be competitive night in and night out. Well, just him getting an extension shows you that the organization is behind that situation. I think it's different if you throw a bunch of guys out there that expect to win. 
and there's obviously a situation where if you don't win, they got to blame someone. But uh, I mean, that's good for him that they're sticking sticking with him and they're behind him. I mean, think I think that's a positive for that organization. Three players, that's it, remain from their opening day roster of 2014. Beautiful day here at Roger Dean Stadium. Big, big crowd sold out. About 83 degrees right now, our game time temperature. Many of the regulars are in for St. Louis. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Atlanta Braves. Enciarte will lead it off, the former Diamondback, and then Ibar and Swisher. Garcia, Olivera, Beckham, Fran Cor back to the team where it all started for him. Freeman and Lolly. The starting nine for the Atlanta Braves. And on the mound for the St. Louis Cardinals, this will be his first competitive action since September 25th of last year. And that is Carlos Martinez. Yeah, this is definitely a good sight for Cardinals fans. It's just, I know it's spring training, but it's always good. I mean, you see the ovation that Yadier Molina got today. Just having him in the lineup is so special. So having Carlos out there today just to get him out and get the butterflies out of the way and get his work in is a huge plus for this team and this organization. Last year, the 23-year-old went 14-7, and seven, nearly 200 innings. First time that he was in a rotation with the big club. Dobbs Tyron Auto Center's defense as we go around the horn for the St. Louis Cardinals. As I mentioned, many of the regulars are in there. Those guys are on the infield. In the outfield, it's Anthony Garcia and left. Magneris Sierra won a batting title two years ago in the minor leagues, is in center. And Jeremy Hazelbaker is in right. Matt Carpenter at third. Jed Jerko at short. Aledmus Diaz is at second. Matt Holliday at first. Yadier Molina is behind the plate. So if you're Derek Lilliquist, Jimmy, what do you think you're, you're watching for early on in this start from Carlos? Everything. I'm watching. You know what? I'm not really watching his stuff as, as much as I'm watching his mechanics, his uh, just his pace, and just to see if he's comfortable out there. This is, a, this is a big day, but this is a day to be under control. And the first pitch is taken for a ball, and we're underway. Ender Inciarte could play all three outfield positions. Last year with Arizona. Hit above 300, six homers, drove in 45, had 21 steals. And he was part of the Shelby, uh, Shelby Miller deal in which uh, Atlanta shipped Shelby to Arizona. There's a strike, two balls and one strike. Another thing I'm looking for is if he can just be under control in his first start. It's, a, it's, it's one thing for your body to be under control, but just be able to just go out there and throw strikes without having to press too hard. And, and that's a part of it being a veteran. Now that he's been around a little bit, he knows he's got to make the team. He can just go out there under control and hopefully just throw strikes. Three and two. Mike Matheny telling us before the game, they're looking around 30, 35 pitches for Carlos here this afternoon. Three, two is taken low. I think Molina thought that was strike three. He was ready to go around the horn. I'm going to have to say that he wasn't the only one. Right. So here is Eric Ibar, switch hitting shortstop. Comes to Atlanta in the Andrelton Simmons deal with the Angels. Simmons, one of the top defensive players in baseball today. And Ibar and two of the Angels' top prospects came over. Left handed pitcher, Sean Newcomb. A right-hander, Chris Ellis. And the first pitch. Little chopper. Martinez off the mound. We know he can really field his position, and he makes the play. Carlos is a great athlete, as we know. But just to be in around the locker room, listening to those guys talk about what a great athlete he is, he's definitely opened some eyes, even just with the older guys. You know, the Wainwrights and those guys talk about what a just a gifted athlete and how quick he is and he can do everything well it's just putting it together all in one big package the Cardinals have also talked about this year the maturity that he's had in the offseason and dealing with the injury he's come into camp in very good shape and Mike was asked about that today Mike Matheny what do you mean maturity he said I mean a little bit of everything attitude ways going about his business here's Nick Swisher Nick Swisher has been around forever. <laughs> been a good player. He has been a good player for a long time, and it's a great addition to, to teams like this and get young kids, loosen up, have fun, learn a little bit, 
and go out there and play the game the way it's meant to be played, not get overwhelmed. Here's an 0 1 pitch to Swisher. That's it out of play. We put too much value on guys that are the quote unquote great clubhouse guys, or do you really need those type of players? You really do need those guys. Um, you know, it's great if they're starting every day in the lineup. And if you can't get that guy, you get a guy like Nick, which sometimes he's starting, sometimes he's a bench guy. But it is great to have someone who can keep that team from getting a little too tight and a little afraid of the manager. Mm -hmm. That's a big part of it. You know, the manager's the boss, but you can't be scared to death to, to be able to approach somebody or the coaching staff and, and talk to them and get more information. Those guys have all the information, and those are guys are the best to talk to. And if you're afraid to talk to them, you're not going to learn. You were saying that the other day with Tony LaRusso, how you kind of grew into that role and felt more comfortable going to him and representing what was happening in the clubhouse. You kind of have to as a veteran. So this is a great spot for Nick Swisher to be in where he's not going to be afraid to go in the office, make sure that their travel schedule is good, make sure that they're, whatever they're doing on the field is fine. There's a lot that goes on. You know, there's just a lot of stuff that goes on inside that locker room every day, whether dealing with the press or dealing with travel or dealing with the dress code and the heat, the cold, whatever it is, hotels. So if you need a guy like this who can speak up. Drafted originally by the A's, 2002, and he strikes out as Martinez may have slipped on that pitch. And gets his first strikeout. You can see um, Carlos, he looks like he's calming down a, a little bit after the uh, the first hitter. Threw some good fastballs, Nick, way behind. And uh, threw a good slider there at the end, a bad one there. But uh, his, his stuff, you know, he's looks like he's under control. And like I said, that's a, that's a big key to this start is just being under control and being around the plate. Adonis Garcia, runner at second, two outs. Good breaking ball, drops in for a strike. Garcia, 58 games last year, hit 277, 10 home runs, 26 RBIs. The 01. And a grounder, hit to short, taken there by Jed Jerko. The Braves strand a runner. Cardinals coming up in the home half of the first. Longtime veteran in the major leagues trying to crack this roster someplace, somehow. We'll face this lineup with Matt Carpenter, Aledmus Diaz, Matt Holliday, Matt Adams serving as the designated hitter, Jed Jerko, Hazel Baker, Garcia, Sierra, and Molina. Gotcha. Rotation this year could see Chasin in there, Manny Banuelos, Bud Norris, Matt Whistler, and Julio Tehran, who is considered their number one so here is Matt Carpenter hitting 143 this spring interesting here the Braves put on a shift for Carpenter who can spray the ball 
Takes it the other way. That's slicing and foul and out of play. If you're wondering, the wind is blowing out to left. <laughs> I was going to say, it's, it's windy again today, by the way. That ball really carried. Yeah. The ball was flying in spring training out to left, the left field corner. And uh, some of these guys stay inside the ball and hit the ball up in the air. They, they know that that's a, a possibility. Look for a home run. You can just stay inside, inside the pitch. 0-2 on Carpenter. Coming off another phenomenal year. 28 home runs, hit 272, drove in 84. Certain guys on this team, you get here to the ballpark, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. They're in the cages or working out. He's one of them. Along with Yadier Molina and Matt Holliday. And that swung on and missed, and a strikeout of Carpenter. Around the horn we go. Dobbs Tire and Auto Center's defense for Atlanta. Oliveira in left. Enciarte is in center. Jeff Francoeur, one of the best arms in the game, is in right. Garcia, Ibar, Beckham, Freeman. Yeah, I got it. I got it. And Lolly is behind the plate. Chassin is on the mound. Had a nice conversation with this young man today, Aledmus Diaz. Fights it off, little fly ball into shallow center field, may drop in a diving catch. Nicely done by Enciarte. Yeah, you got a good jump on that ball, and that's uh, obviously the key to the outfield is getting the first step, getting out of the hole. You can see he makes a great first step and gets moving. He gets full speed in a hurry, and then the rest is just ability and going after the ball. I don't think I've seen a guy play as shallow as Jim Edmonds did in center field. You felt comfortable doing that. Well, as in Anaheim, our, uh, our defensive coach said that there more, ba more balls are going to fall in front than they're going to go over your head. And the balls that go over your head are usually mistakes that are going to go over your head no matter how deep you play. So uh, they don't want you playing to catch doubles and triples. They want you to play to catch the mistakes or the, actually the, the pitches that are made uh, the way they're supposed to be made. And if you make your pitch, they're not really going to put the barrel on the ball. And that's the, those are the balls everybody wants caught, not the ball down the middle that gets ripped off the wall. Here's Holiday. Ryan to the base hit into right, his first hit this spring. You've been around Matt Holiday a lot, working in the outfield and at first base, does a nice job just going with this pitch. If he's healthy, I think we all expect another big year from the 36-year-old. Yeah, it's interesting now we're talking about a little bit of first base, and you and I were talking before the game. That could be a real positive for him if he can get some time at first base to take a break off his legs and just maybe take it easy and more at bats. You know, you get the, the just longevity of being out there every day is a little bit easier at first base than it is in the outfield. Here's Matt Adams against the shift, showing bunt. There you go. Drops down a beauty. Base hit for Adams. Perfectly placed. Hey, if they're going to give it to you, why not? That's a situation, I think, early in the year, especially in spring training, you can try it. Two outs. The shift is on. You get a guy to second base. I mean, I think this is a good situation. I mean, you could see the shortstop is... The, I mean, he's up the middle. He's even out of position for the shortstop. And then all you have to do is get it into fair territory. Beautifully placed. And now it's Jed Jerko with runners at first and second. And two outs here in the bottom of the first. The misconception sometimes, too, is when you do that, that you're just being selfish. But y'all, you got to take a hit sometimes. Whenever. Sure. And then now you got a guy in scoring position with two outs, which anything can happen here. That is, though. They, they say you're passing the buck, so to speak. But now you get a guy in scoring position, as you mentioned, and a hitter at the plate that's got some pop in Jed Jerko. If there was enough information... Jerko hitting 250, no home runs, couple of RBIs this spring. The 0-1. You look at the numbers for Jerko, really good power. 49 home runs over the last three seasons. And that's including <laughs> a stint to the minor leagues, you said. Went down last year just to correct his swing for about a month. Came back. They talked about just getting the barrel through the zone, being quicker. At times his swing can get a little long. The 1-1. One, one. One Born, raised, and still resides in Morgantown, West Virginia. Played for the Mountaineers, was a terrific college player, top shortstop in the country one year. 
Think about it, it's kind of crazy. You can be in the big leagues and have to be sent down to work on your yeah. swing. That's driven into right, coming on Fran Corr and makes the catch. So the Cardinals strand two, we played one. No score from Roger Dean Stadium. game the health of today's starter Carlos Martinez and also Matt Holiday at first Jimmy I know you've been working with the outfielders but also a little bit with Holiday too is making the transition over to first base something you did as well yeah I had a chance to play a lot of first base and just kind of reassure him that it's not that big of a deal as far as the mental um, situation you just got to go over there and just really rely on just being able to catch the ball and get to first base there's a few other things holding runners on and doing this and that but really just being having your mind at ease where this is your job is to catch the ball and get over to first base and cover and that's it i mean you really if you, if you make it simple everything happens so fast if you got to keep your mind from wandering and, and, and getting uh, anxious about what could happen make it a lot easier on yourself hector Oliveira pulls it fair past carpenter and into the Braves bullpen off the sidewall taken there by Anthony Garcia and it's a double for Olivera dealing with a lot of different things over at first base yeah I'll tell you just like just like a pitcher the ball flies all over the place you can just see the balls tailing in the wind and it's just Another one of those things as a first baseman, sometimes you can kind of stride out towards and towards the person who's throwing you the ball and go get it. If you do that too early and the ball tails, you're going to cross yourself up, not be able to reach out and catch the ball. Just simple stuff like that is something you have to work on if you're not used to it. Here's Gordon Beckham. Beckham, Atlanta native, former University of Georgia standout, signed a one-year deal. He's 29 years of age, career 242 hitter, had a down season a year ago with the White Sox. Here's a 1-0. Braves are trying to figure out who would play third base. Beckham has made overtures to have that position go to him. He's hitting 222 this spring. One and two. Let's see if you're paying attention. The first inning of velocity was kind of just in the high 80s, trying to get the ball over the plate. Gave up a leadoff double, 95, 94. So he's getting a little bit more comfortable, maybe a little bit uh, feel for the game. You get a little bit into it when you give up a hit or a double, and your adrenaline starts going, takes the best, you know, it get, sure. gets the best of you, and you want to compete. So you start to let it fly. Yeah, look to see what happens here. It keeps it under control. Here's a one-two pitch. Molina sets up outside, hits his spot, and it's out of play. 
Yachty, if you're wondering, may hit today. Did hit off a machine this morning, so he is swinging the bat. He's got a protective structure inside the glove to help him with that uh, surgically repaired thumb. Two surgeries this past offseason. The one-two. Boy, that's nasty right there. Woo. Great slider right there on the outer half of the plate. Running off the plate. Looks like a strike. Ends up being a ball, but it's the whole idea. Make it look like it's going to be a strike and get it to run off the plate. That's what he did here. Here's Jeff Rancourt. Boy, you pull for guys like this, don't you? He's had a lot of a lot of time in the big leagues. Good guy. He's been around for a while. and It's come full circle this year. He's gone from being on the cover of Sports Illustrated at the age of 21 to now battling for his spot at the age of 32 with the Braves. Breaks his bat. Jerko cannot get there. Into center field it goes. Olivera had to make sure that wasn't caught. He advances to third, so runners at the corners for Freeman. You see how the jam jam shot up the middle. You got to be careful. He doesn't get make this play. He doesn't have any idea who the shortstop is. He's got to make sure he's not quick enough to get to that ball and is not able to score. But that's a that's a great read right there. And everybody wonders why he's not scoring or don't get an RBI. But there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot going on out there. You got to make sure you're you're not running into outs before you can score. Nate Fryman is third season. And a grounder towards third. Play at the plate. They've got the runner hung up. That's Olivera. Carpenter will tag him out. Did that to perfection. Yeah, you you think you'd take the double play right there, but that play is just so easily done right in front of you. You just got to take the out and cut off the run. This guy's made it look easy. Carp does a great job of just giving Yachty a nice, easy throw and then executed the right way. Close it down and make it as quick as possible here's Blake Lolly the catcher today for the Atlanta Braves last appeared in the major leagues back in 2013 he's a nine roster invitee for the Atlanta Braves AJ Pruszynski will be back for Atlanta along with Tyler Flowers who was picked up from the White Sox his time is called You know, he's at 22 pitches. It'll be interesting to see if he gets a quick out if they are tempted. The Cardinals would be tempted to send Martinez back out there. Good breaking ball in for a strike. I'd be really surprised if he threw three innings, no matter the pitch count right now. But that's something that they know better than we do, and there's nobody throwing in the pin yet. So you never know what's going to happen. Probably going to ask him in between innings. 0-1 pitch. Line drive and a base hit into left center field and a run will score. Cut off by Sierra. Nice play from Magnaris Sierra in center field. Young man showing some range right there. Getting to that ball in the gap and throwing it in. Made a good throw. So the RBI by Lolly. His first hit of the spring. First RBI. <laughs> Gets over there quick, makes a good turn, throws the ball right to third base, keeps the guy from going from first to third. A little textbook baseball from the young man. Yep. Thrown into the spotlight in a hurry. They really feel that he's going to be a top of the lineup type player eventually in his career. Very good speed and a good arm. Showed that. Here's Enciarte. Takes a pitch high. He walked his first time up. As I mentioned earlier, he was part of the Shelby Miller deal. Braves picked up Enciarte, Aaron Blair, and Dansby Swanson. Hit the first holiday, keeps it in front. And Martinez to the bag. First ground ball of the spring, I think. That is his first. Nice play. Braves get on the board. One nothing.
Blues against three of the best teams in the NHL. They beat the Hawks Wednesday night. They'll play Anaheim tonight. You'll see that game on Fox Sports Midwest. Anaheim second place, by the way, in the Pacific Division. Then Saturday, they're at Dallas. Dallas is tied for first in the Western Conference. So big games coming up for the Blues. And find the action right here on Fox Sports Midwest. Also, the big news with St. Louis. Blues will play the Hawks in the Winter Classic at Bush Stadium on January 2nd. That'll be great. Hazel Baker is the hitter. First pitch is a strike. My partner Jim Edmonds used to get out on the ice. I bet the Cardinals love that. I did get in trouble for bringing in Keel out there one day. Tony said no more. That's enough. Yeah. Well, that was when he was a young stud. He was still on the mound, so uh, they didn't want to get him. Me to get me to get him hurt. Well, I'd have been a little worried about you too. You know, I never thought about right. it. Right. They're worried about Rick and not you. We were just out there playing around. It wasn't like we were skating a whole bunch, but they were they were poking fun at it, trying to knock our skates out from underneath us and flipping us up and down. But uh, it was good. It's uh, you know it's great to be a part of just going out there and being able to see that and watching practice. It's great perspective to see what's really going on in, in hockey. Fights it off, slowly hit towards third. Gloved by Dennis Garcia, and Hazel Baker is safe. He can run a little bit. That's one of his uh, one of his strengths, getting down the line in a hurry, and uh, they just showed it there. He was two for three yesterday with a double off of Noah Syndergaard, so he gets another start today. Jam shot, not a great swing, but puts the ball in play and runs hard the whole way, and is rewarded with a base hit. I think that's uh, something that doesn't get overlooked. You know, even you get frustrated and get jammed, you still run hard. Show up with a base hit right there. Cardinals also like what they've seen from this young man at the plate, Anthony Garcia. Does have a home run and five RBI so far. Even the balls he's been hitting have been hard. His yeah. outs have been hard, and he's been swinging the bat really well. I've got to believe that they, they want to see as much of him as they can. As we talked about the other day, you have to have depth. Over six months, you've got to have it. And it's not just in the big league level. You've got to have it in AAA, too. Can they turn two? Out there. Nice turn. And second base by Gordon Beckham. And safe at first. Been looking forward to seeing this young man play. Magnaris Sierra. The Cardinals 2012 international signing class produced three of their top ten prospects. One of them is number one, Alex Reyes, who we will not see here in spring training at least compete in games in which tickets are sold. And the other is Sierra. Gulf Coast League, his U.S. debut in 2014, he won the batting title. Hits it the other way. That ball is slicing, and it is foul. That would have been a nice start. Mm -hmm. I think this first at bat of the, in the big leagues, it doesn't matter if you're in spring training. Your first at bat each year in spring training is always nerve-wracking. It doesn't matter how old you are. So magnify that a little bit, being a young kid coming out of minor league camp for the day. You'd like to get that hit and get it out of the way and smooth sailing for, for the rest of your life, for the rest of your career, hopefully. He's 5'11", 160. Runner goes... Throw down to second, and they got him. Out. So Garcia is gunned down at second base by Lolly. Made it close, but it's a great throw right there by the catcher. One ball, one strike on Sierra. Probably uh, returns to Peoria this year. And he lines it to first, and the catch is made by Freiman, who, by the way, is six foot eight. Needed every part of that. <laughs>
Cardinals will be our next spring training telecast. It'll come your way noon on Monday. And spring training 2016 continues here from Jupiter, Florida. Along with the Cardinals Hall of Famer, Jim Edmonds, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Sung Wan Oh is your new pitcher for the Cardinals. Had the chance to visit with Oh before the game. And so what's the biggest difference that you're seeing right now? And by the way, we did have an interpreter. I was going to say, did you have a good talk? Yeah, we, we there was a lot of just nodding heads. <laughs> uh, but he said the running that took place in Japan and Korea, and there's his interpreter right there, Eugene, who's really a pleasure to be around. He said the running here, and he likes it. He said it's not nearly as much because now he can work on what he wants to work on. He's got time to work on pitches, the things that he's here to do. He said a whole session here would be like a warm-up over in Korea in terms of running. And the first pitch is taken high by Eric Ibar. His interpreter, Eugene, was born in Cincinnati, moved at the age of seven to Seoul, Korea, went to an international high school. That's Pop Fowl. Graduated from NYU. And where he's from, dual citizenship, had to go back for two years of military service. He's 29 years old. He knew O's agent from some previous work, and that's how he got introduced to this job. That's pulled down the right field line, foul. But he'll be with us all season long. Now he's in the big leagues. Now he's in the bigs. And he's smiling about it. He is a nice guy. He is. Here's a 1-2 pitch by O. May have hit him. It did. So Ibar is hit by the pitch. What are the coaches saying about O? Because I know you're in uniform an awful lot, talking about various players. What's their impression so far? You know, I haven't heard too much. I, I just know from the first time that he threw in pitcher's batting practice that he he looked really good. The ball looked like it was coming out of his hand real well. He's got a good changeup. Um, he's really smooth, so when he lets go of the ball, it kind of jumps on you, and that's something you like to see. Nick Swisher at the plate. Struck out his first time up. Jim is in uniform with the players, but also doing a lot of work studying up for the games. <laughs> I'm afraid of where this is going. And so Jim is going to tell us uh, the hometown of Sun Wan Oh. He's from South Korea. What part? John, get up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got there? <laughs> That's close enough. Can anybody pronounce that? Good luck. That's a tough one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out after today. Yep. I can promise you that. I know you will. I'll be ready on Monday. One ball, one strike on Nick Swisher. They talk about O having five or six different variations of how he cuts the ball, changes speeds. They believe, though, he's got very good control with all those pitches. Yeah, he'll, he'll mix up his breaking ball. He'll throw one a little bit harder than the other. He'll float one in there. Runner goes on a 2-1 pitch. They'll avoid the double play. Little change up there. Just keeps you off balance. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the ball can jump out of his hand, so you have to be, as a hitter, you can't just give up the fastball to look for all that other stuff and to throw it right by you. Carlos Martinez made the start today. A couple of strikeouts and two innings of work. And now it brings in Garcia. Battling for his spot at third base for the Braves. Runner at second is Ibar. Three hits aside and a one-run Atlanta lead. You know, many times you'll see guys like O or Rosenthal, Segrist, some of those pitchers that in regular season play you'll see in the back end of games come in early to face major league hitters that may only play five innings. Well... The, the thought process is you definitely want to get your 
key guys in there against their key guys if you can. You don't want to send your, well, first of all, you don't want your closer sitting for eight innings in the spring training game just sitting around. And then you want them to face big league hitters. You don't want them facing double A hitters. He's got to test himself, too. Holiday going over and runs out of room. That's Brian Pena there on the right, who was signed in the offseason to a two year deal by the Cardinals from Cincinnati. Derek Lilliquist, who was married in the offseason, in the center, and Mike Matheny there on the left. Ibar is your runner at second base and a 1 2 pitch. I think back in the day we were playing San Diego and Trevor Hoffman started a game. Is that right? Because he wanted to see that, you know, he wanted to see the top three guys in our lineup. But I, I don't, I'm okay with that, especially if one of your aces aren't throwing that day. And if you got, you know, maybe an off day where you can, you know, you're maybe a bullpen day or something's different, you throw the guy out there, let him get the big league hitters out, especially one, two, and three. Remember final game, I think it was in 2008, Troy Percival made the start against the Pirates, in a game that was meaningless. But you know, Tony La Russa, it was meaningful to him. Well, I, actually, I was thinking of Troy Percival when I said that because he did that plenty of times when I was with the Angels, but I remember Trevor starting a game in San Diego just in spring training just to get, like I said, get the top three hitters, just kind of see where you're at. He also had a tea time. <laughs> I'm sure he did. <laughs> two balls, two strikes, one out. Runner at second base. Lined into a double play. Over to grab it was Jerko and Ibar is double off at second base. Scoreless frame for some one over. The start today for the Cardinals, two innings, a couple of strikeouts. As Jimmy talked about, though, we saw the velocity pick up, which was good to see. Yeah, definitely first inning. I like the first inning that he didn't have the velocity. It just goes to show you that he's maturing and he's comfortable. And then made some good pitches. That was a great slider to Swisher. Another good slider to Beckham. And then just, like I said, gave up the double and turned it up a notch. Interesting here, Yadier Molina in the batter's box for the first time. Now, will he swing the bat? I was going to say, don't be surprised if he doesn't swing the bat, but I think the competitive nature of Yadi, it's going to be hard for him to take pitches the whole time, unless it's just a flat-out plan. But this is part of it. You know, when you're a hitter, you want to see game situations. This will tell you where you're at if you're tracking the ball, if you Batting practice isn't enough in spring training. There's strike two. Molina, when swinging off the tee or soft toss, had been wearing a 
a wrap around that surgically repaired area of his left hand. Here's the 0-2. I think they realized he was not swinging the bat. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't tell somebody up there. Right. <laughs> Throw some fastball so I can track it and let's move on. But uh, that's just a typical, you know, it's, like I said, when you're a veteran, you're comfortable. It's part of the game. you got to go up there and, and see some pitches, but you don't need to get hurt. Back to the top of the lineup and Matt Carpenter. Carpenter struck out his first time up and drives this into right, but there's Fran Core for out number two. MLB.TV Premium, everything you have come to expect and more. New low price for 2016. Watch every out-of-market game on all 30 teams. Live and in high definition on over 400 supported devices. Blackout and restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Ledmus Diaz he told us that before the game. He said, you know, I hear a lot of people say Ledmus. He said, that's not right. Ledmus Diaz. Year three of a four-year contract for the Cardinals. Breaks his bat. Little squibber that rolls foul. I asked Mike Matheny today before the game down on the field. I said, what do you like about Diaz? What is he showing you that maybe he hasn't done in the last couple of springs, he said his arm. So we're seeing good range and a very good arm. And he said that's a byproduct of him being healthy. Last couple of springs, he dealt with some arm issues, couldn't show it off, and he said it's definitely got our attention, just how well he's throwing the baseball. And he's made a couple of really good plays deep in the hole. That shortstop position is huge, as we know, and it's, it's, it's great to have a guy who can go out and hit for average or for power. We're very fortunate to have Johnny with those home runs, but I'm telling you, catching the ball is number one priority. It's just like having a great catcher. Catching the ball is a, is a priority on this team, and got to find someone that can play defense and, and take that spot. And it's pulled foul. I would imagine we're going to find out in the next 10 to 14 days what the Cardinals feel about Diaz or Jerko. Can they play this position every day, or do they need to go outside the organization. That's probably the timetable that you're looking at. Yeah, if you're going to have to go outside the organization, you're hoping that you don't have to do it last second. You want to get somebody that get a little more comfortable with the teammates, kind of see what's going on and get him out there. But I wouldn't be surprised they give one of these guys a shot. Two and two the count with two outs and nobody on. The count runs full. Chasin, today's starter for the Atlanta Braves in his third inning of work. We'll see Freddy Gonzalez and the Braves in week one of the regular season. Cardinals will start on the road against Pittsburgh. Three, two. Foul back. McGuire, who made a start earlier in spring, is getting loose for the Cardinals in their pen. Big, tall right-hander. Taken high. Good at bat right there. A lot of different pitches over that at bat. It's going to be key, too. You know, you don't have to hit 300. You get on base, exactly. make something happen, and catch the ball. Here's Holiday. He singled to right his first time up. That's the first walk issued by Shasin. Two outs and a runner at first is Holiday. Looks at a ball in. You will 
you'll see teams running a lot of different situations in spring training that normally they wouldn't. Like now. Breaking ball and a throw to second. Diaz with a stolen base. Picked the right pitch. Got a great jump. Did pick the right pitch. Got a breaking ball. It's amazing what the difference between the fastball and the breaking ball can do for these guys. He got an amazing jump. And he is gone. First step. Great step. For the, as soon as he picks up the foot, it's such a difference. Pitch, pitch selection and the jump is, I mean, the difference between a good jump and a bad jump is an easy safe or bang, bang, and you're out. Split second, literally. One ball, one strike on Holiday. Big room to the right side of the outfield. Chops it off the plate. Shasin gets it, throws, and makes the play. Cardinals strand their third runner of the day. We head to the fourth, and it's 1-0 Atlanta. NASCAR goes west to Phoenix starting Saturday with the Xfinity Series Racing. Then Sunday, it's Sprint Cup Racing. Dale Earnhardt Jr. looks to defend his title from last year. All begins Saturday at 1 on Fox and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Deck McGuire is the third pitcher used by the Cardinals. As he's joined his fourth organization with St. Louis. He's played with the Blue Jays, the A's, and the Dodgers, their farm systems. Here's Hector Olivera. Olivera first time up with a double inside the third base line. He's an interesting story. The Braves were among the five primary suitors for Olivera before the Dodgers outbid the field. Six years, sixty-two and a half million dollars. Watch out! That's off the glove of Diaz, and not in time. Nice pick by Holiday at first. And they say that Olivera can hit. If that was any indication. Ball jumped off his bat. He was a ten-year vet of the uh, Cuban national team. Defected. The Braves have tried him at third base as McGuire may have gotten a piece of that, and they anticipate that if he's going to play at this level, he's got to play left field. Did that in the Puerto Rican Winter League, and so the day for Olivera is through, and he's two for two. Good test right there for Matt Holliday. It's one thing that we talked about a little bit is you don't know when that pitcher's going to throw over. You know, a lot of guys come set first, a lot of guys throw before they're set. Lefties will whip it over at you. Runner goes. Molina from his knees. And not in time. So stolen base.
It's Malik Smith, the runner. At second base, pinch running for Oldebera. We were also talking to Matt Holliday about how you hold a runner on and how it varies with coming off the bag with a left-handed bat or a right-handed bat up. We noticed the other day that against lefties, he wasn't coming off the line hardly at all, maybe two steps, and that's by design. They want him to basically guard the line. And be ready for the ball coming off the bat. I mean, that's the biggest... Once, once the pitch is delivered to the plate, all your focus has to be at the plate and ready to, to field your position. So if you're bouncing off and not used to it, maybe just give you a little less room and a little less movement to uh, concentrate on the ball coming at you. But if you're trying to jump off the base and trying to cover too much ground, if you're not used to it, it definitely gets your attention away from what you're really trying to focus on. 3-1 pitch to Beckham. Get out of play, and it's three and two. Right-hander starts to throw for the Braves in their pen. That'll be it for Chassin with three scoreless innings. For the Cardinals, it began with Carlos Martinez. Gave up a run in two innings, but looked good. O pitch the third, scoreless frame, and now it's Deck McGuire. Three-two, instead of check on Malik Smith. The next is hit out of play. Mentioned that Olivera was picked up from the Dodgers, played there briefly after the, the big money investment in him. The Braves traded Alex Wood, highly thought of left-hander to the Dodgers. And the names that they have traded, I mean, they are some of the biggest names in the game. Andrelton Simmons, Shelby Miller. Remember Cameron Mabin was there, Jason Hayward, Justin Upton, Evan Gaddis, Craig Kimbrell. Sierra racing to the gap in left center and he'll make the catch shows off the arm with a strong throw in the third and the tag is there came off the bag right there a little aggressive let's talk about Sierra taking charge the young man in left center and they say he's got a very good arm he showed it there yeah he did he was aggressive in the early in the workout here and Makes a good strong throw and this overslides the base right here. Matt Carpenter heads up play, staying with it. He liked that though. Kid comes up from the minor leagues. We're running out there doing pop up and communication drills, and he runs all the way over to right field and takes charge of a ball that the right fielder should catch. Kind of people look around. I'm like, hey, hey, that's okay. Like that's what he's supposed to do. If he calls the ball, let him have it. Establish a little bit of uh, control early. Frank Hoare with a bouncer to third. Carpenter bobbles it, but stays with it and makes the play. Sierra, a couple of fine pl uh, plays defensively in center field here today.
Cardinal packs all season long. The bobblehead packs, the jersey packs. Make sure you find those as a single game ticket if you wish at Cardinals.com. Matt Adams will be the hitter. The new pitcher is a 25-year-old Jose Ramirez. Hard thrower. He is out of minor league options, so he'll have to break camp with the Braves out of spring training or be exposed to outright waivers. Limited major league experience. He's given up 17 earned runs and 17 and two-thirds. But his average about 95 miles an hour on the gun. And a high fly ball into right field. And there's Smith to make the catch. So Matt Adams is one for two of the bunt single, and it brings in Jed Jerko. The ball a little bit off the end right there. We, good swing, though. Yep. A couple good swings yesterday. They talked about that earlier and today in the locker room. Home run the other way. And today with a good swing, just hit it off the end and up into the wind. Jerko lined out to right with a runner at second his first time up. Takes a pitch high and inside. Hit to short. Taken there by Ibar. Two down find it interesting that Eric Ibar makes the trip a 10-year veteran when every team knows the Cardinals may be looking for a shortstop would Ibar potentially fit into the plans for the Cardinals normally you wouldn't see a guy of that ilk make this kind of trip normally I'm just saying Jimmy I, I'm listening <laughs> I think I, it's funny that the name came up Yesterday and a little bit earlier today, but uh, yeah, I definitely think that it is around the league that Cardinals might be in the market for a shortstop. There's Jeremy Hazelbaker. Kind of like dangling a piece of meat in front of a shark. Is uh -huh. that what you're saying? Yeah. Just see what he's got. Take a look. Wiggling it out there. I thought you made an interesting point, though, because by the time you get to the end of spring, for the most part, you know, teams, for the most part, know what they've got. So if you're going to make a move, sometimes it's better to do it early than later in spring. Well, I also think, too, that if you're watching from a distance, which everyone is, and there's a lot of people in that front office watching, they know when you get down to about 28, 29, 27 guys that there's, an op there's going to be an opportunity there that someone's going to release an infielder. Sure. And it, it's too late then. You know, if you're just going to hang around and wait till opening day, I'll, I'll take uh, my chances with someone falling off a roster and then make do with what you got. But if you're going to make a move and you want something in return, you're going to have to do it a little bit earlier than that. Peralta has had surgery, the Cardinals shortstop. And the talk has been two to three months that he'd be out. At least. Here's Hazel Baker at the plate. Right fielder today. And he draws a two out walk. I think you have to like how Mike has done this with these young players. If you've noticed, they have a good game the day before. They're back in the starting lineup the next day. Keep them hungry, reward them. Fine line, rewarding them, and seeing if they can do it back-to-back -back days. This is from last Saturday in the injury to Johnny Peralta. And surgery. See him grimace there. John Mozalock telling us it's very, very similar to Yadier Molina's thumb injury. And a strike to Anthony Garcia. Looks pretty harmless, doesn't it? Isn't it crazy? It really does. That's amazing. But then you think about what you do with that thumb and how important it is to feel the baseball, grip the bat. What I'm saying is how little that looks to completely tear the ligament off your thumb. Hazel Baker stealing and safe. Cardinals are two for three in steals today. I think it's important for these young guys that come up their first time in camp Hazel Baker knew uh, last year, I think, or so. It just they know you can run. You gotta 
show that you can run at this level and just play the game. I mean, there's always little things. Bench players have to be good at something. If you can come in and steal, look at the Dave Roberts' stolen base in playoffs. Sure. Gets the uh, Red Sox to the World Series. Catch made in center field by Enciarte. Cardinal strand a runner. They have stranded four on the afternoon. We move to the fifth. Atlanta on top. Rodriguez takes over in the fifth inning at uh, first base. Jacob Wilson is your new third baseman for St. Louis. One to nothing Braves. Second inning of work for Deck McGuire. Mentioned earlier, young man at the plate, six foot eight, Nate Freiman. Some believe he is the tallest position player no. ever in the history of baseball. We were trying to think about this earlier. The tallest players that you've seen. Oh, Richie man. Sexton comes to mind. He would be one. We thought of him. Certainly Randy Johnson. Chris Young would be another one. Here's a 1-1. One -one. I see McGuire. I see 62. I think Mark McGuire. Deck wearing number 62. Mark will be a bench coach this year with San Diego. And speaking of the Padres, our old friend Skip Schumacher called it quits as he officially retired. Good for him. Great career. A high fly ball to Sierra in center field. Now you talk about a guy that got the most out of everything. Very good outfielder, strong arm, but then the conversion to second base and what he was able to do really prolonged his career. The Cardinals had to talk him into doing that, you may remember, Jimmy, and saying, look, this is a good thing for you, and it certainly was. I was here for that. I was against it originally. Were you really? Yeah, I really liked him as an outfielder. I thought he was could play all three positions. He had a great arm, gave you a great at bats, and he wasn't afraid to go out there and get after it. And he uh, was a great teammate. He's a good friend, and uh, congratulations to him on a great career. Here's an 0 1 pitch with one out to Lolly. He was kind of the prototypical Cardinal bench player. Those guys that they've had over the years that have really provided important moments, key at bats. I think a Schumacher and Aaron Miles on your team in 2006. Certainly Daniel Descalso was another one. Spezio. Yep. I think that's the point. You better find, like you said, a bench guy with a role that understands that role and can contribute. Soft liner to Rodriguez. Mark Sweeney, another one. Very good pinch hitter in his career. One of the tops in the, statistically in baseball. It's really hard to do that job as a young player. You, you have to be comfortable. You have to 
be around for a while, to know your role, be comfortable in your role, be able to be upstairs when the game's going on, knowing you should be on the bench and getting your work in and getting ready to hit at any time. And know the game. Don't get surprised. And there's no secret to these guys are a lot. The best ones are a little bit older. And the good ones are been around for a long time. Sure. Saw Lenny Harris the other day. All-time pinch hits leader. With Miami. Yeah, that is hard. I mean, and you think about when you're pinch hitting, more times than not, it's late innings, specialization of the game. Guys throwing 95 to 100, you're coming off a bench cold. That's tough. And Ciarte has walked and grounded out. One and two. Cardinals will have Sierra, Molina, and the top of the lineup coming up. A little flare out to shallow center, and that drops in for a base hit. I know it's routine, but I'm just watching Sierra on some of these pitches. And I know you pick up on little things. Just his jump, the first steps, the way he's carrying himself. Looks like he belongs. It's natural for him. Yeah. He's not working really hard at doing, getting in the, in the flow of the game. He's moving around. He's going to the ball good. It's just like, what to say, you, you send somebody out there that's young. If you don't notice them, they did a great job. And he's doing a great job. Other we're noticing him because we're paying attention to him. If it wasn't for us talking about him, you wouldn't know he was no. out there. Made a couple of very good defensive plays. One ball, one strike on Eric Ibar. Yeah, you see, look at this. You said the situation here. He's, he's playing way over in left center and gets a great jump. Shading a guy, maybe not knowing what's going on, not knowing who's at the plate, how your pitcher's facing, knowing that maybe you get a sinker in there, you stay off to left center a little bit, the wind's blowing. Just kind of going out there and doing his job like mm -hmm. it's no big deal. One and two the count. Going out there relying on your coach and making it happen. You can hear Jose Okendo barking orders to Yadier Molina, who's then telling the left fielder Garcia to back up. And also they put Wilson on the line at third. Eric Ibar, the 31-year-old, former All-Star and Gold Glover at the plate. The hot dog's on the grill. The hot dogs are on fire. Uh-huh. Either that or they're cooking in the truck. They're right by our truck. Here's a one-two. A little bit high. So Ibar, in the final year of his deals, the Braves pick him up. They trade Simmons. The Braves have a shortstop that's 18. He is their shortstop of the future. And they feel he might even be up at some point this year. I bar a 10 year vet, 276 career hitter. Definitely going to be interesting to see. Like I said, they might be dangling him here. Mm -hmm. But how do you trade Simmons? And then you just go ahead and trade the guy. Right. I mean, it's got to be tough on the general manager and the ownership to figure out without trying to make everyone upset in the city of Atlanta. Where, what direction you're going. The 2-2. Breaking ball lifted into shallow center. There's Sierra shading from the sun. Backs up, makes the catch. Well, carried on him just a bit. He's due up first when we come back.
club's 10-year anniversary through the pages of the new Post-Dispatch book, Bush Stadium, a decade of excellence. Highlights include photos, memories, season recaps of each year, and excerpts by reporter Derek Gould and also Hall of Fame writer Rick Hummel. Don't wait. Order Bush Stadium, a decade of excellence, now at stltoday.com slash bushbook. Chris Ellis, a right-hander, is the new pitcher for the Atlanta Braves. He was with the Angels. Mentioned his name earlier. He was part of the Antleton Simmons deal. He's got a low to mid-90s fastball as Sierra drops down a bunt and a beauty. Look at him fly. Gets down the line. This guy's going to be pretty good. I mean, that looked easy, didn't he? Sure did. He lined out his first time. He's one for two and certainly a threat to steal. That is perfect as he gets down the line. Rod Crew used to say, if you bun it in the right spot, you don't have to run as hard. I said, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> exactly. 3,000 plus hits. He was the hitting coach. And this is Eric Fryer with a fly ball down the right field line. Smith is over and out of room. He was the hitting coach with the Milwaukee Brewers. Back when they had guys had just struck out time and again, they set the all time record. You're thinking, are they even listening to him? They weren't. They uh, they definitely weren't. I talked to him a few times, and he was frustrated. I think that's why he's why he got out of the game so quickly. He was so great. He was really, really hard on the young guys, but he was so knowledgeable and so great to talk to. And so another one of those guys we were talking about the other day about being so good, it was almost hard for him to teach because it was sure. above everyone else. It just, like you said, if you bunt the ball in the right spot, you don't have to run as hard. Well, the problem is everyone else is trying to run before they bunt because no one, first of all, if you don't have the speed, and second of all, if you don't make a great bunt, you're more worried about that than anything. So it's, it's easier said than done, but what a, what a great man. There's the 01. He was telling me one day, he said, the best way to get out of a slump is to put a bunt down. We did an extended interview just on hitting and to hear what he had to say was incredible. It was great. He was one of those guys that wouldn't really talk to you about the mechanics of hitting until you're away from the game. Talk to the right mental. side, and Fryer is out. Sierra advancing to second. But isn't that a fine line, though, the mental and the physical side of, of a sport that is built in failure? I think the mental part is, is tougher than anything, and I, I think that during the game, it's your thought process that usually gets you out or gets you hits more than it's your mechanics unless you're just completely messed up at the time. And, and like I said, sometimes the thought process would straighten you right back out. So Fryer breaks his bat, advancing on the play. Sierra to second. The Cardinals brought up Nick Plummer the other day for a game, and, and Mike was talking about the fact that you... You want to expose these young players like Sierra and Plummer just a chance to see what this is like. He said this is very similar to what we did with Plummer. This is Jacob Wilson now at the plate, pinch hitting for Carpenter. Nick Plummer looks to be a pretty good athlete, too. I like it. I think that when I came up with the Angels, they kind of purposely pulled guys up and moved them around, around their star prospects to, to maybe trick them into thinking that they needed to work harder. I like when you give a kid a chance to come up and see what he's kind of going to be facing and give him a little taste. Definitely know that these guys come up and respect the situation and know that they got to go out here and play hard. Maybe get one game, maybe get two in the course of a four-week spring training. But it's an honor and uh, I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with giving a, a guy a chance to see what this is all about. And, I mean, I think that if you give somebody some confidence that, that hey, this is just another level, it's still baseball. Sure. 1-1. One, one. Interesting to see what the Braves are doing here with their second baseman, trying to keep 
Sierra close, and so there's all kinds of room for Jacob Wilson to go to the right field area. Jacob has been a part of the Arizona Fall League the last couple of years. They have not added him to the 40-man rosters. That drops in for a strike. So you shield him from the Rule 5 draft. But he could be an extra infielder at some point. Interesting shift right here. Just it really is. Somebody not known. Taking your chance. A couple breaking balls early in the count. 2-2. Two -two. Goes to right field. Base hit. Smith comes up firing. Sierra to the plate. Not in time. Run scores. Jacob Wilson has tied this game at one. And Sierra was flying around third. It's a great, great example right there of just challenging the arms because nowadays the arms aren't as strong as they used to be and guys don't take enough time to take care of their defense and their throwing and you barely see a guy that can come up throw the ball well and throw the ball on the money at the same time. Take that chance with that speed all day long. That's pretty cool to watch. That's the one thing I wish if I had a chance to go back and ask for one more thing in my with my body, I'd be able to run. You could run? Not you like said that. that the other no, day. I can't run like that. Not even close. Hang a breaking ball, and Diaz fouls it back. The guy that runs like that would probably, if I was started at first and he started at home plate, he would catch me before I got to home plate running around the bases. No way. Easily. Nope. I'm telling you. Not buying it. <laughs> you can't play center field as long as you did without having speed. Some kind of speed. It's like, like having low gears. You can only run from A to B quickly. And just over the long haul, it wasn't, I wasn't getting it done. But uh, that's why, I mean, that's kind of the idea why you have to learn in this game. You got to make adjustments and you got to be in the right place and take advantage of all the little things, what you can do to make yourself better. A check on Wilson at second base. He's tied it up. Five hits aside in this game. It's 1-1. You just wonder if a shift like that against Jacob Wilson, who's been a, a career minor leaguer, if it's something the Braves are just messing with. I mean, you wouldn't think that's a, a scouting report in early March on Jacob Wilson to pull the ball. The only thing I can think of is they brought their AAA coach with them and sure. they said this guy's a dead pull hitter. That's the only thing I can think of. But you also never know. They might, somebody might know him out there. Oh, Diaz is hit by the uh, fastball up and in. So he's on base for the second time to go along with a walk. And now we'll see Dean Anna pinch run for Aledmus Diaz. Fastball trying to go down and in, just got away. That's, uh, don't like to see that but part of the game. But this is spring training, you know, you still got to try and make your pitch. And sometimes they're going to get away from you. Here's Jonathan Rodriguez. One out, runners at first and second. Runners are going. Throw down to third is high. Take me through the base runners here. And in particular, if you're that man, Dean Anna, what you have to do? Well, what's funny is he caught my attention because he me was too. really trying to get a jump. And what you do, you, you got to follow the guy in second, but you also don't want to get thrown out in second and get in a late jump. Sometimes they'll throw behind you. You're really just, you're not even really watching the pitcher. You kind of got both the runner in front of you and the pitcher kind of in your peripheral, and you're just trying to get a jump with the guy at second. And you just don't want to be an easy out because you got a late jump. So second and third, that pitch high inside to Rodriguez. Interesting right there. Hit batter, jump on the next pitch. Maybe everyone's not paying attention, still thinking about the the uh, the hit batter and an aggressive situation right there. You run, catch everybody by surprise. Mm -hmm. Caught me by surprise. The 2-0. He was crossed up. Definitely crossed up right there. You don't see a whole lot of 2-0 breaking balls. 
That's an old-fashioned crossed up right there. <laughs> you know, you, you made a great point talking about the Braves and you're trying to, to sell this team to your fan base. Here's the previous pitch. Catcher clearly crossed up. Well, you can tell right the way he sets up. He's looking fastball before he even throws the ball. Just nice, comfortable, down and away. It's the final season. Hard to believe at Turner Field, which opened up in 1997. So it's not that old of a ballpark. They'll move to the Atlanta suburb of Cobb County. And that ball gets away, and the Cardinals have the lead. They pushed it here all day long. By doing that, Wilson scores, and it's now 2-1. Calling for that fastball down and away again. Cut it a little bit and just gets away. It's a little mechanical. Things like that go wrong, you know. Spring, that's what spring training's all about. You've got to get working on your mechanics. got to be able to throw the ball on both sides of the plate. You can tell. You can definitely tell out here when it's early when guys are out of sync. It's, that's the stuff you see right there. Now the infield drawn in. Three and one on Jonathan Rodriguez. Dean Anna, your runner at third. That's nearly to the backstop. Braves need to get somebody up. And as we say that, they do. Good call, Danny. You just wonder how unnerved he's gotten after hitting a man, wild pitch, crossed up his catcher. Here's Roger McDowell. Roger, longtime pitching coach with the Braves. Terry Pendleton will be back. They have Bo Porter on their coaching staff. Freddie Gonzalez is back. So the Cardinals have picked up two runs. They have their first lead of the afternoon. It's 2-1. A reminder that opening day will be on a Sunday. Two-hour pregame show starting at 10 on Fox Sports Midwest. It'll be the Cardinals and the Pirates. It's been a great rivalry the last couple of years. Chance to see the MVP candidate, Andrew McCutcheon, and the Pirates, the season opener on Fox Sports Midwest. Ball on the field. Spring training, you'll see a guy get his work in. He'll start, I'm talking about pitchers. He'll start doing poles, running back and forth, so they're in your batter's eye. Talking about pitchers? Yeah. That's what one thing I think it's hilarious when you're standing on deck. That's the last thing you want to see is a ball squirting through the right. infield <laughs> when you're getting ready to hit. So one out, runners at the corners, and a ball to Adams. Thinking to yourself, he's wild in the bullpen. How's he going to be when he gets into the game? Mm -hmm. Adams today, a single on a bunt, and also flied out to right. 2-0. Jed Jerko on deck. You can see Ellis right here. He's really pressing. It's sometimes when you're out there on that field, it doesn't matter if you're in the outfield, in the infield, or on the mound. When things aren't going right, you really try and just back off a little bit and aim everything. And Adams with a high fly ball into deep right center field. It's at the track and caught. Runner tags from third. That's Anna. He'll score RBI for Matt Adams. And it's a 3-1 St. Louis lead. It's a tough place to be a left-handed hitter some days. That ball's scorched. The wind's not blowing that hard, but enough to knock that ball down. It sounded good off the bat, didn't it? Sure did. It's good to see him swinging the bat well. Swung the bat well in, in uh, batting practice today, too, which is... Whether people watch it or not or care or not, that's a that's a pretty good sign also. I think that kind of all comes together all at once. Here's Jed Jerko, runner at first, inside. You see certain guys, BP is like home run derby. Other guys, all they're doing is, let's say it's a right-handed batter. I watch John Carlos Stanton take every pitch to right field. I mean, he knows he can hit it 500 feet. But it's how he gets himself ready for the game. Try to stay on the ball. And you try to get loose. I mean, you're, I, some days you're out there and you're not loose until you really crank it up. And it's just, there's a couple ways to look at it. You know, you stay on the ball, drive the ball up the middle. And I also think, too, when you want to let it fly, you got to let it fly once in a while. Just see where you're at. If you can be under control and really swing hard. 2 always hit towards third. What a play here. Can he get him? Wow, what a play. 
Outstanding play to rob Jed Jerko down at third. That's one of the best plays we've seen this spring. 3-1 as we head to the sixth. Offer fan friendly values throughout the 2016 season. If you're looking for ways to save some cash or find a great value at the ballpark, make sure to check out the fan value corner at cardinals.com slash values. New pitcher for St. Louis, Jeremy Hefner. Out of Perkins, Oklahoma, the former Met. Battled injuries the last couple of years. And the first pitch is a strike. Began with the Padres, was their minor league pitcher of the year back in 2008. This is Reed Brignac. We've seen him a bunch in spring training last couple of years with Miami. Missed the end of the 2013 season at Tommy John, his first. And then he had a second. Can't even imagine. Mm. I just sat and watched a Tommy John one time. The actual surgery. How these guys come back from that is. Where'd they take the amazing. ligament on the one that you were watching? Opposite wrist. Sometimes it's a hip, I think, that they'll go to. The crazy thing, the one I saw was the one in the opposite wrist um, snapped. Mm. And they had, I think they went to the other. The, the same wrist, which they don't like to do. Right. Or they go sometimes to. There's another spot in your leg. Is it the hip? I thought it was the hip, or at least that region. What a crazy surgery. Borrowing parts, borrowing parts from one part of your body and putting them in another. And then guys are going throwing 100. Good luck. <laughs> Anna makes the play. Brignac is retired for the first out here in the sixth. It's got to be a test of will to have to know that you're going to sit out for 12 to 14, 16 months and, and you come back and compete at this level. And I mean, you've done it a number of times. You talk to guys and they, they have the surgery and then not long after that they say, I feel great. I feel like I should be throwing. I'm back to where I was. And the monotony of the rehab is really tough. This is Ozzy Albies, a switch hitter. He's at short. Just talking to Lance Lynn, too, you know. <laughs> you get to the point and you finally don't have pain. Sure. And you think you're invincible and you can go out there and do it, yet you still got to follow the steps. Anna makes the play, two down. Be nice to see when he starts to throw again off the mound and how he's actually doing. Yeah. And get him going again. And 
I give him a ton of credit for what he did last year because he didn't say a word about it. And we were wondering why he wasn't able to finish off hitters the way that he was in previous years. You know, he was essentially a one-pitch pitcher. It hurt too much to, to break one off and try to throw a slider or curveball. That elbow is a sensitive situation, Ooh. too. I mean, even thrown from the outfield, and you can feel when you have twinges and and aches and pains and in the arm and in the joints. It is it is a scary deal, and it is not fun. I can't imagine having to pitch with that stuff. This is Malik Smith. Came in as a pinch runner and then was thrown out at third by Sierra from center field. 0-2 two with two outs, nobody on. Hefner is one of those guys that does have major league experience. Made 13 starts with the Mets in 2012, 23 in 2013. And a strikeout. Showing Bunt with two strikes. 3-1 St. Louis. Spring training 2016 from Roger Dean Stadium in Jupiter, Florida. Glad that you're with us and enjoying Cardinals baseball wherever you may be. Along with the Cardinals Hall of Famer Jim Edmonds, I'm Dan McLaughlin. And there's a look at the top pick from a year ago, Dansby Swanson, who was originally drafted by Arizona and then traded to the Braves. He's a local kid, played at Vanderbilt, but uh, grew up in the area group of Braves fan we talked about how this would be a dream come true so there you go there you go number 80 mm. bet you he'll be excited to get that number dropped a little bit except his his bank accounts a little different than most number 80s that you <laughs> yeah, see in exactly. spring here's Ryan Weber is Hazel Baker drops down a bunt that rolls foul <laughs> I remember talking to Jeff Francoeur one time, and I said, what was it like being drafted by your hometown team? And you know something about this. And he said it was the biggest blessing, and it was the biggest curse. I said it was awesome, but yet the request of your time and all the different things made it very tough. It definitely, it definitely is 50-50. It's, uh, it's great to play at home, but the requests are. And you know, when I first came up, it was nothing like it is today. The draft wasn't even the same. Guys like me coming out of high school didn't even know what the draft was. And then you get to the big leagues in your hometown, and it is just it's hectic as it can be. Everyone, you know, you're still close to all the friends you grew up with. And ticket requests, I'm telling you, I was leaving 30 tickets a night. Were you ready? Every night. I had to go a half hour early to each day just to write tickets down. 
That's back to Ryan Weber for the out. Yeah, it's different, too, in the fact now that players are taxed on those tickets. So it was a different story when you first started. Yeah, well, it's a totally different game now. But we used to walk in and uh, just write down, like the spring training pass list, we'd walk in and just write down the names of who the players would uh, need to leave tickets for, and they would just leave the tickets, you know, within reason. And, did, and then it started becoming where you had to borrow tickets, where you're only allowed to get four family and two guests, and so you had six, and then you had to go borrow and borrow and borrow, and then now it's all by a computer, and every ticket you leave, you're getting taxed on. It so, adds up. Yeah, I don't want to play it. I wouldn't want to play it no. home nowadays. <laughs> no. Here's a 1-0 to Anthony Garcia. Lines it towards short. Oh, what a catch. Wow. What a play. We've had back-to-back -back innings. The Braves have come up with two dandy plays. That was a great play. I think the ball's getting through right there. Albies with a terrific catch at short. It brings in Sierra with two outs. The game has changed in terms of speed. For a long time, it was power. And now with certain things out of the game, you're getting to see more of the, the speed back into it to an extent as Sierra lines out to left field. But the point being, the speed of Sierra has made a difference today. So scoreless frame for Ryan Weber. We head to the seventh. Aspects in the Cardinals organization. He's in the top five. Magnaris Sierra getting a start today. Speed, good arm. We've seen a little bit of everything. He's done it all today. Went over there. Made a great throw. Look at that punt. We're talking about button the ball in the right place. Nice and easy. Just mm -hmm. lay it down and run. Emilio Matafacio. A switch hitter. Utility man. AC Jeremy Hefner in his second inning of work. Ground ball towards first, taken there by Rodriguez for the out. So four up and four down for Hefner since he's come in the game. This is the kind of guy that gives you a little depth. You know, you certainly think about a rotation spot in the minor leagues, work himself back, but if you have any issues, major league experience, you want guys that have been there before to have the chance to come back up and and not be awed by the situation. Yeah, you know, having a bunch of guys that can really go out there and dominate is a great problem to have, but then you don't have that guy that you can go out and use when you're down five to nothing or sixth inning where you need some guy to eat up some innings and you need some guys around like that. Maybe if they start out in triple A and this game has a funny way of working itself out and guys will get their chance to make it an appearance here and there and spot starts and 
there's a lot of space for a lot of guys up there, and it's just uh, being a guy that can eat up innings, either start or in relief, is, is, is so valuable. Off the glove of Hefner, and a bare hands but can't come up with it. Jace Peterson is aboard. It's funny because that that kind of came up. You know, they got they got a, a bullpen is pretty established, and they got some guys in there sure. that, that really have some roles and. You're looking for sometimes a guy to eat up innings, and you got to find a way to, you know, use your bullpen and not tear it up. And uh, some, right now, I don't see a lot of guys or a guy down there who's going to be your innings guy or your, you know, guy that you would use when when you're down and kind of just need someone to go out there and get some outs. And the Cardinals, the way that the schedule plays out, a lot of off days early on in the season. So Carlos Martinez, if you wanted him to stay down here, get more work, certainly could do that. And you may add that long man that you're talking about to protect you in that bullpen, at least initially. Yeah, that schedule with a lot of days off early in the year is, is, is good and bad. And the good news is you, early in the year you can get some extra guys up there. But late in the year you're going to have some days where you're going to, or some weeks that you're going to not have some days off and when you need them. This is Freiman at the plate. Looks at a ball in. He is Duke's all-time home run leader. And he has spent a little time in the big leagues. And there's a connection with the Cardinals. He was platooning with Brandon Moss with the A's a few years ago. So he would face the lefties. Moss would face the righties. Out in front, pops it back foul, and it's 2-2. Two and two. They have a two-time All-Star that'll be there every day as long as he's healthy, and that's Freddie Freeman. He's trying to come back from wrist injuries, and he's one of the only guys left that hasn't been traded. <laughs> Here's a 2-2. He's got a little Dale Murphy in him, doesn't he? He's been holding the bat out there like yeah. that. Big, tall, solid swing. What a player Dale Murphy was. It's unbelievable. I used to watch the games on TBS, so you'd see him every day if you wanted to watch baseball. Look at this right here. It is a little bit like that. 3 2 is popped out. Fryer throws the mask with room and makes the catch. The 2016 Cardinals Hall of Fame class, you have a chance to vote for that class, and some great names are on it. There'll be a couple of players that will join Jim Edmonds in the Cardinals Hall of Fame. And voting starts now through April 20th. Edward Jones, proud to sponsor the Cardinals Hall of Fame. Chris Carpenter on that list, Matt Morris, Joe Torre, Edgar Renteria, Scott Rowland. Just a matter of time for all those guys. I would say so. What was that day like for you? It was cool. It's it's it's, it's just another one of those things you don't expect, and you get get that phone call, and you're like, are you are you sure you're calling the right number? Fryer will throw to second and a stolen base as that ball almost scooted into center. Oh, they got the right goal, uh, guy <laughs> when they called number 15. See, you've been telling me you're not fast. You needed speed. You shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame, the Cardinals Hall of Fame. Well, I just was, it's just an honor. I mean, it, you, you spend time on that field, and Ozzie and uh, Lou, not even, and even before Willie, but the guys that, you know, Red, those guys are in the Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame, and that's, you know, kind of what you were used to seeing, and that's just a big, big, ordeal when those guys come down on the field and Gibby I mean it's those are impressive impressive people mm -hmm. and stature and, and not on the field and away from the field also and it's just it, it's weird to even put yourself in that kind of category Blake Lally at the plate I think the uh, baseball hall of fame did you no justice I'll say it maybe you don't but you should be on at least the ballot I looked at you as being like the, the first of the, the ESPN highlights and the Fox Sports highlight guys because you would make dazzling plays. So people around the country would see that. And, you know, if you're playing in St. Louis 20 years ago, that may not be the case. 
There's a ground ball that's hit the second. Dean Anna has it. Will stretch. I'll put you on the spot when we come back. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Three one St. Louis. West giving you a behind the scenes view of the Cardinals with news, features, and more on Cardinals Insider. This week, get to know a little bit more about Mike Leak. Find out uh, who the 2016 Cardinals Hall of Fame nominees are and hear from Mike Matheny about his batting order strategy. Presented by your Mid America Chevy dealers, Sunday at 3 on Fox Sports Midwest. So I said I was going to put you on the spot. <laughs> I think at least you should be on the ballot for the Hall of Fame. Are, are you disappointed? Did you expect it? What do you What do you think? How do you feel about it? I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I was definitely disappointed. I thought that uh, playing for 17 years definitely would get me some recognition. Um, more than five percent. I was kind of shocked, but I, I was never really considered I, I don't know I didn't think that the Hall of Fame thing would become Colin right away I thought maybe if I hung around for a while I might get a chance definitely a bad situation at the wrong time but uh, definitely thought I would get more than that so I'm not gonna lie and say I was a little disappointed um, I've heard a lot of people talk about it well, I've, I've actually heard a lot of people talk about they need to change the the voting sure because of that but I don't want to be in in the middle of that stuff it is one and two on Eric Fryer, as much as, as people now put such an emphasis on defense and metrics, you know, if they break down your numbers and how that was done defensively, and you also played on good teams, championship teams, you just wonder if you're the kind of guy that played in New York, would we be talking about you being off the ballot? I seriously doubt it. Yeah, it, it definitely is interesting to see what guys get as far as you know the, the, I was worried the steroid get there uh, would uh, you know those guys would just get pushed off and they keep hanging around and moving up the ladder so you never know what you're gonna get with this ballot and I guess like I said I was the wrong place at the wrong time but probably not deserving of a, a Hall of Fame induction but I would hope to be maybe on the ballot for a few years and just get appreciated a little bit more but that I said to Tim McKernan this morning that's kind of my that was kind of my career. It was kind of always that guy that just was, it was always something. You know, if I made a good play, someone said I slowed down to die. I mean, it's just weird. You know, if I hit 40 home runs, I struck out too much. If I, you know, if I didn't hit 40 home runs, I wasn't trying. I mean, it was always something negative. It's always trying to knock somebody down, and I kind of got used to living that way. There's a base hit. Jacob Wilson. Well, partner, I think you should at least be on the ballot. Well, I appreciate that. My father uh, called me one day. I think he waited about a four or five days after. Did he really? Yeah, I think he was a little hurt and upset, too. And he's been there with me the whole time, and 
think about four or five days after he said to me, well, look at it this way. You don't have to get these phone calls once a year for the rest of your <laughs> life asking you what you think about it. And I guess if there was one positive, there is uh, definitely uh, the phone won't ring as much asking me questions about it. Here's Dean Anna. Wilson is your runner at first base. 3-1 St. Louis. The play here in the bottom of the seventh. Cardinals extremely aggressive in this ballgame in terms of steals, taking the extra base. That's something Mike wants his team to be aware of. That's something that you can kind of get complacent with. You know, you be aggressive. You never know what's going to happen. You put the pressure on the defense. You've seen guys throw the ball. You know, trying to, the right fielder trying to throw the ball to the plate, throws it up the line. Guy hitting. Can advance the second base. I mean, there's so many little things in this game that can be done with hustle and just a little bit of, you know, just go out there and play the game hard. I mean, take that chance once in a while. I wonder if the Cardinals would carry this over in regular season. I know this time last year was a point of emphasis. Mike said we need to be more aggressive, and then the game started. He didn't see it as much, but you have to have the right personnel to do it, too. Wilson is running, and the throw is not in time. Stolen base, Jacob Wilson. I think last year when you start getting some injuries, yeah, the uh, emphasis starts to be put placed in uh, who's going to play that day and how are we going to get through this week and how are we going to replace this guy, and you kind of lose focus on what you wanted to work on in spring training was maybe being a little bit more aggressive. So hopefully this year it can carry over into the season. Three balls, one strike. Dean Anna at the plate. And a ground ball that's hit to first. The step on the bag, the six foot eight first baseman Fryer. Two outs, Wilson advancing to third. It's been 10 years since the Braves finished their run of 14 straight playoff appearances. Incredible, 14 straight. Since then, they've made the playoffs three times. A lot of your teams would hook up with the Braves in postseason. The trio of Smoltz and Glavin and Maddox, now all three in the Hall of Fame. That would be a tough weekend series to go down to Turner Field and have those three lined up. A lot of fun, though. It was a lot, a of, lot of fun. A lot of fun to compete. A lot of fun to be on the same field with those guys. They were special when they were playing. It's no, no wonder that they're all in the Hall of Fame. But you, uh, when you, you knew what you were getting yourself into when you went down there. Chipper Jones is back on the team's payroll after three years away from retiring from playing the game. Special assistant to the baseball operations folks with the Atlanta Braves. One of the all-time great switch hitters, Chipper Jones. Surprised he didn't make the trip down here. Shocking, isn't it? <laughs> Not surprised at all. Are you going to make the trip to uh, Orlando? Um, I'm gonna go with probably not. Probably I, not. Hey, we're on TV. I'm there. If we're uh, we're not, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I have to get some sun or something. I don't know. <laughs> we find something Beach. else to do. <laughs> I think that's right in the uh, middle of our uh, couple days off. Maybe a maybe a quick trip home to see the kids. Mm -hmm. Two outs, runner at third, one ball, and two strikes. Michael Ullman is on deck if the Cardinals can extend the inning. Hit to first, it's off the glove. A race to the bag, a flip, and what a play. Wow. What a play. That's Swanson, the number one overall pick. It comes up with that tremendous play. Braves defensively have been outstanding here today.
Sports Ball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. By Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Bomberito, where price sells cars. Braves have played some defense here today. They trail though. The score of three to one. First pitch is hit in the air right side. Cardinals were working on this early today, about 10 o'clock. You were in uniform and they were skying him to work on pop-ups and who's calling him, who's doing what. I've never seen the ball thrown up that high by a machine in my entire career. And we were laughing about it in the outfield because, you know, for us out there, it's easy. The infielders, I'm telling you, that ball got up there a couple times and it blew, it blew 30 feet. The second baseman make a call out there by second base and end up landing on the mound. Here is Swanson. Made a really good play to in the bottom of the seventh at second base. Good bare hand. I mean, this is athletic play. He was a two-time All-American at Vanderbilt. 2015 number one overall pick. When you think about what happened in Nashville this offseason in terms of the winter meetings, this is quite a haul. They got Dansby Swanson, Aaron Blair, Ender Enciarte in the deal with Arizona for Shelby Miller. And by the way, it was Matt Holliday's brother, who was the top recruiter at Vanderbilt, that brought Swanson to that school. Josh Holliday. Two balls, two strikes. What does it tell you, though, about Tony La Russa right now? I mean, he's going for broke. Signing Zach Greinke, trading for Miller, giving up a number one overall pick. Trying to win now, but I'll tell you what, that just knowing that situation, that's that's the ownership group saying, here we go. Mm -hmm. let's, let's do it. Here's some money. Let's get after it. They have a window, obviously. We talk about that window every year. They think they have a team to put together. They need some pitching to back it up. And uh, they give up the number one pick in the nation to uh, to go after a pitcher. There's a base hit to left. The swing. Yeah, win now at all costs. But uh, you never know. Those guys can uh, they can put it together and get a championship out of it. Sometimes it's worth it if uh, you hope that they can hang around for a while, too. This is pregame today. What we're talking about, there's Jim Edmonds out there. Look how high that ball is. We're laughing at it. Tommy Pham's like, are you kidding me? He said he didn't even see it. They were shooting <laughs> them out left and right. We had two machines going, and one was shooting to the left, and one was shooting to the right. But they didn't let you know which one was coming out. Right. You had to kind of find it. So uh, out there in the outfield, we were kind of just chasing whatever they threw up at us. You've been around this game a long time. Are, are you able to walk on the field? And for instance, Swanson has made a really good defensive play. You saw the, the ball weight. It came off his bat. And that's well hit. Deep right field. And it is gone. This game is tied. Home run, Reed Brignac. A two-run shot. And we're tied up at three. Nice low line drive to keep Ooh. it below the wind. Yeah. The knockdown four iron that you hit under the tree. Right. <laughs> I saw you do that yesterday. It's <laughs> a good swing right there. Just like get the bat out in front, hit it on the barrel, and good things happen. If you're the Braves, you love seeing him do that against a lefty, too. Good swing. Stay behind it. Like I said, hit, hit the ball down through the wind. That is a foul ball. But my question before the home run would have been, are you able to just see a kid and say, yep, I know that, that guy is going to be pretty good or is going to have a shot? I think you can see the, the athletic ability in some players. I think you can see the movement and how smooth they are. That's a, that's a really tough, you can't teach that. You can't, you can't teach movement. You can kind of help a guy mentally, teach him how to hit, what to look for. But hands you can't teach, you can't teach speed, and you can't, you know, you just can't teach athletic ability. And you can kind of see that right away. 
There's a ground ball and a base hit into center field. You see guys who can run, and you can see guys who are fighting to run. And there's a difference. Definitely a difference. You know what's interesting is uh, early in, in spring when you're standing out there in the morning when they're doing their, their running, and they're running the bases, you know, getting used to running around the bases, and you can see guys that are struggling to run and guys that are just nice and smooth and they're running really well and it's a uh, it, it's interesting to watch got just that every guy's got a different stride and some make it look so easy and some just are really huffing and puffing around the bases jason aquino is coming to game and giving up two runs now a check on the runner as we have a tie ball game here in the eighth inning it's three three malik smith came in as a pinch runner back in the fourth stayed in the game and he's 0 for 1. Pitch by Aquino. It better be. <laughs> Take it inside. Somebody thought you were funny down there laughing. <laughs> it's always that one person you can hear when it's quiet. Spring training? For yeah. sure. Or in an empty ballpark? Yeah. You just hope they're saying something that's not X rated. You could hear it all the time. When you play the Marlins, <laughs> yeah, you'd have about 5,000 people at that ballpark. It's a little different now. I've watched some games on TV thinking, why don't they turn that mic down right. behind the plate? <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to listen to that guy screaming in everyone's ear. Hey, trust me, we hear about it. <laughs> I'm sure. Can't wait. Got the microphones all over the place in the ballpark. And the one guy that... You don't want situated by the microphone is there is that guy. Yeah, don't be that guy Three and oh no activity for the Cardinals in their pen Other thing about Aquino right now working very slowly you See some of the the infielders kind of picking at the dirt yep. hands on the hips This is where spring training gets to be long. This is why this has got to be why send the players, the, 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 uh, the starters home after the fifth inning mm -hmm. right here. This is tough when you've been out there for a couple hours waiting to get your chance and you get a, uh, a guy come in and struggle. And, you know, everyone's going to struggle. You just hope that they keep, the, you know, keep everybody moving and keep everyone on their toes. It becomes, to an extent, a minor league game. And that's why players are in the minor leagues. They're not as efficient. It's part of what you see. It is. I mean, they, and, you know, they're they're getting their chance, and that's that's the biggest difference is trying to learn the play of the game, trying to be smart, trying to be efficient. Runner goes tough to turn two, safe there, and out at first. Greg Garcia at shortstop, ranging to his left, a very tough play, do or die with the tag. Just came up a bit short, where they do get the out. That's number two there in the top of the eighth. And it brings in Emilio Bonifacio. That's one of the big questions of this spring. The Cardinals are trying to find out if Greg Garcia can play short. We talk a lot about Jed Jerko and Aledmus Diaz, but Garcia is also in that conversation. Definitely in that conversation. Ever wonder, foul ball. You ever wonder when you're watching this game, just if, if you weren't here every day and you didn't have the knowledge that you have being around this club and being in the game for so long, if you think really think back, you get a kid who's great his whole life. He's good his whole life. He goes through the high school. He goes through college. He goes through the minor leagues. And then this kid can't play at the big league level. Mm -hmm. 
And you hear it all the time. All the time. We More could, so than not. We could go right now about four or five rows behind home <laughs> play where all the scouts are, and well, they would tell you that exactly. Well, and then those are the guys that are You're sitting right. there, too. You know? Guys that didn't make it. Guys that... It's just, it's, it's, it's intriguing to me to see all these guys, and they're great athletes, and they're great players at some point in their life, and just not good enough to play at the big league level. It Still. blows me away. It shows you how hard it is. And like you were saying the other day, you're up here, and the game seems slow, and there's the scouts behind home plate. Even when I was watching you guys just take the fly balls today, the speed of that, just getting to the ball, properly getting set to make a catch and a throw the quickness of some of these guys I mean yeah. even standing out there with Randall today and um, just seeing him get going you know get out of the hole get and I know they're wearing cleats and I'm standing there with tennis shoes on but just that quick first step is just so important and just it's amazing to stand up guys are just bigger faster and stronger these days a 2-1 pitch to Emilio Bonifacio. Go-ahead run is at second base. That slips in there for a strike. Right-hander starts to throw in the Cardinals' pen. If this game stays tied after nine, usually they'll play one more inning. We're not there yet. We'll see. The 2-2. Two -two. Rounder, left side, Jacob Wilson. The Braves pick up two on one swing of the bat. We're tied, 3-3. Three, three. What's on Tap is presented by Budweiser. We'll come your way at noon, St. Louis time. Monday afternoon, the Twins will be here. Budweiser, what's on Tap? Twins will come across Alligator Alley and say goodbye to Fort Myers for about a day and say hello to Jupiter. Tyrell Jenkins, remember that name. He was part of the Shelby Miller, Jason Hayward deal. Had a lot of injuries with the Cardinals, but did show at times a lot of promise. That shoulder surgery back in August of 2013. He's a great athlete. The story with him is that he committed to play quarterback at Baylor. Cardinals signed him and gave him a pretty good signing bonus to forego that scholarship to Baylor. And those numbers last year were good enough for him to earn the Braves minor league pitcher of the year. Going eight and nine. They say he's really gotten command of both the two-seamer and the four-seamer. So Shelby Miller was short-term. And now it's Jenkins who could be a big part of that deal. And the Cardinals got Jason Hayward. Here's Charles McElroy. Little junior. That's right. Do you work with him much? No, but I play with his father. Now do you feel old? <laughs> I've felt old for a while now. <laughs> this kid could fly. 
Oh. I mean, he was running around yeah. the bases today. You talk about, like, before, effortless, I'll, smooth. I was just going to say, this kid today running around the bases. I said, who is that? And he said, that's, yeah. that's, that's Chuck's kid. Yeah. And I played with Chuck McElroy, and I'm telling you, this, this kid can run. And it, it'll be fun to watch him if he gets on base. I, I think it's going to be interesting that when you look at uh, how the 25-man roster or when you look at September when call-ups are there, why you don't take a look at McElroy or Charlie Tilson who could steal a bag, and they're there for one reason, steal. That ball will be a foul ball. McElroy at second base on a bloop already. I'm telling you, it's it's pretty it's pretty special to watch. And I don't know, you know, that's the one thing we don't get to see on the TV. As you're watching the ball, you're following the play, watching these kids run around the bases. And, that, and, and this is what I was talking about earlier. Running in a, in a group in a line with 40 other guys, he was standing out a lot. I saw the same thing. I think uh, Chao said he was probably one of the fastest guys in the organization. Yeah, for sure. So he's a leadoff man here in the bottom of the eighth. 3-3 three, three game, no balls, two strikes. Braves are talking about Jenkins at some point making his Major League debut this year. He's 6'4", 180 pounds. Out of Henderson, Texas. He was drafted by the Cardinals first round supplemental draft in 2010. So he's been around for a while. But if you're going to play QB at uh, Baylor, you're an athlete. <laughs> That'd be tough to pass up. Yeah. Two and two. Much of this big crowd is stuck around. Weather has been beautiful here today at Roger Dean Stadium. 2-2 pitch and a strikeout. And that'll bring in Greg Garcia. Good two-seamer right there. You can see what he thought, what they're talking about. There's a lot of run to that ball. Balcata seaman took off. Coming out of the hand, that almost looks like it's going to be a strike, or it looks like it's going to be a strike with a little velocity. It just runs off the table. There's Greg Garcia. He's at shortstop now. And a line drive base hit. He's gotten off to a slow start offensively. Came in at 154, but it's early in camp. Proved to be the Cardinals' top pinch hitter a year ago. Here's David Washington. Big kid. Big kid. 6'5", 240 pounds, David Washington. He's a 15th round pick back in 2009. Split time last year with Palm Beach and Springfield. The fastball taken low and away. You can see that sinker again right mm -hmm. there. It's just diving down and out of the zone. Washington has good power, 62 minor league home runs. Last year, he had 16 at Springfield. Cardinals have attempted six steals here today. One ball, one strike. Let's see good run on that ball. That is some kind of phenomenon. Why guys can do, hold that ball and throw that ball that runs like that. And other guys throw the ball flat and dead as can be. It's... Go! Something that can't be taught either. You cannot teach a sinker like that. It is either there or it's not. What about the finger pressure? I've played a lot, a lot of time. A lot. I've messed with the ball a lot, trying to get one way, the other way. I mean, my ball was straight. I could not get it to move. I could throw it sidearm. These guys with this natural sinkers is just, uh, it's incredible to watch, especially up close. It's, you can't appreciate it when you're watching it on TV. It's just not natural. Three and one. And usually it's the guys that throw from your side that have some type of natural movement one way or another. Just lefties, it's just the way it is. 
And you know what? It's funny. is a lot of these guys that are tall and lanky. For yes. some reason, have that sink. Well, you see, use the term bowling ball sinker. Right. <laughs> and then when it hits your bat, it usually breaks it if you don't hit it right on the barrel. Let's see if they want to start Garcia with one out. Count of three and two on David Washington. High strikeout totals. Do you run him? He is running, and the pitch is taken low for a ball. So the Cardinals have runners at first and second. And Charlie Tilson will be the hitter. I don't know about you. I really like what I've seen out of Tilson. I was just going to say, I cannot wait to watch him get some more at-bats, get his feet wet. He'll maybe go back down another year and see what he can what he can come up with because uh, they're they're pretty high on this guy and like I said they the other day I was talking about how he stole 14 bases and they asked him to run more and he ended up stealing 40 so it's one of those guys you just tell him tell him to do something he goes out there and does it he listens to wants to learn one out runners at first and second I talked to Charlie before the game I said who's been really influential in getting you to this spot with guys that are here in camp he named two guys Jim Edmonds and Willie McGee he said Willie's really been helpful. He said Jimmy's been great in terms of how to read pitches defensively what you're looking for He said Willie was really good in terms of the mindset of a base dealer like what what you're looking for and why You need to be aggressive in that spot and have no fear and that's something that speed can be only part of being a good base runner and a base stealer you got to have a little bit of knowledge of what you want to do and how you're going to do it it's easy to say go out there and run right yeah he did go so they peeled out at third two balls and one strike you see a lot of guys that can really run that can't steal bases and that's just a lot of technique a lot of just willingness to go out there and run and want to do it he said Juan Pierre has been very helpful as well. He said he and Juan share the uh, the same agent, so those two have gotten together and talked about just the nuances, the little difference differences that you have in stealing bases. As Tilson hits it to second base, out there and safe at first, gets down the line well. I really like it when you talk to young players and you want to teach them something. And they're kind of asking you are ahead of what you're going to teach them and they kind of see it They already have kind of thought about how to watch the catcher move um, In the outfield or how to pick up uh, when he thinks the pitcher's going to throw over and all these little things that If you're thinking about it at that age, you're already way ahead of the game because there's guys that are in the big leagues That don't pay attention to that. Already. Sure So here is Sierra. He could cap off a very good day with a base hit right here. Magneris Sierra just joining us dropped down a bunt for a base hit made a couple of nice plays and he looks at a strike left fielder is shallow but I'm not sure if the left fielder needs even a step or two in yeah, he's not that shallow right 0 one pitch Yeah. Yeah. Sierra trying to break a 3-3 game. Fouls it back. You've seen him slap it the other way. I've been told that that's not necessarily the hitter that you're going to see. He's good at going the other way, but he'll jump on a ball if he gets it and can pull it. It's a pretty good swing right there. He wasn't holding back right no. there. One and two the count. And I'm sure you can understand this. They said the biggest thing he has to work on is just pitch recognition. Young guy moving up. Yeah, that's part of the big leagues. I mean, those guys on the mound are trying to get you to think and get pitches to look like strikes that end up being balls and get you to swing and chase. And it's a big part of the game. Ground ball, base hit for Sierra. Tilson was running. A run will score. That's Garcia. 
What a day for Sierra. And guys like this on base, they can just keep on running. Yeah. Probably going to have a nice night back at the hotel tonight, huh? Oh, yeah. What a relief, huh? Big league game. Some good plays. Hopefully the game-winning hit. Just having a good day all, all around. Last year he had 19 steals between Peoria and Johnson City. And with this combination, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. This is Eric Fryer. He is leaning and running. Throw down to third. Tilson back in safely. Sierra with a stolen base. I was going to say, it's like a manager's dream right oh. there. Your two fastest guys, arguably. On the corners, two outs. Put a lot of pressure on the defense. The manager can sit back and see what they can come up with. Fryer is over two. A couple of ground outs looking for his first hit this spring. Cardinals have a right-hander getting loose in the pen. They're back on top 4-3. Mike Matheny telling us the whole idea was well, let's just give Sierra a little glimpse into what this is like. Hopefully he plays well. He's not only played well, he has starred in this game. The 2-0. High chopper and a foul ball. He beats that out at first right there. It's a two-run single. Right. <laughs> You're probably right. I can see Okendo down there. Keep He's already going. telling him, make sure you're running hard the whole way. I'm telling you, that guy at third base right there, Okendo, Jose, always teaching. Always teaching. He's always got something positive to say. He's always thinking ahead on the base paths. It's, it's amazing to listen to him talk. And a grounder pulled foul. And because of that and his reputation in the game, I, I am a little surprised he's not managing I, somewhere. I was surprised for a while, too. I think it's a little bit part he's happy where he's at. Um, I'm sure he would like to manage, but then some guys would just rather stay where you're at and sure. enjoy what you got. And you got a good thing here, so hopefully he's happy and he's been doing a great job for a long time. Lives in this area. Remember, he was originally signed by the Mets, so he's familiar with Port St. Lucie and now Jupiter. So now he's living here full time. Yeah, I just found out out this spring. He's down here, down here in the winter now, which is nice. Three, two, and the bases will be loaded. He's thinking about it. Should he go to his bullpen or not? Jacob Wilson will have a chance with the bases loaded to add to this Cardinals 4-3 lead. Reminder that jersey packs are available for you at Cardinals.com. Six great games during this upcoming season. Cardinals are giving away replica jerseys. Get tickets to all these game dates through the 10-game jersey pack or buy them as a single-game ticket on sale now at cardinals.com. So Jacob Wilson, the hitter. Two outs with the bases loaded. Wilson pulls it foul. count at 30 for Tyrell Jenkins. Cold foul. I think these guys figured out he's got a sinker. I think so. <laughs> They're sitting on it. 
That's one thing with the sinker. You better be ready for it. Better be ready at third, too. Yeah, definitely. That's why you take that lead in foul territory, hits you, it's dead ball. You're, you're hoping you're not going to get hit, though. That's, uh, they used to be out there in the grass sometimes. It was certain guys, you're definitely in the grass. Do you remember Latchman when McGuire was hitting? Oh, yeah. He'd he was, be down in the bullpen. <laughs> he'd, be, he'd hide behind the dugout. If the dugout came out like that, he'd probably be behind it. I didn't necessarily blame him. <laughs> Me neither. Here's a one-two. Got him with the breaking ball. So the Cardinals, thanks to Sierra, take the lead. Greg Garcia, the go-ahead run. 4-3 after eight. St. Louis Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Shelter Insurance. For your auto, home, and life, visit your local agent or find us on the web at shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. And by Bud Light. Raise one to right now. Sam Tui Valala, the hard-throwing right-hander, is in for St. Louis. Magnera Sierra, big, big day at center field for the Cardinals. They lead this ball game four to three. Got your attention, didn't it, Sierra today? It definitely did. You know what? I was just—I was actually just going to ask you that. What do you? You've been sitting up here for so long. Like when I'm in the dugout and I see kids like that come and play. When I was a player, I loved it. I, I loved, loved it. seeing a young, yeah. young kids coming up. I loved the first hit. I loved the first home run, strikeout, all that. I think it's such an exciting time for someone's career. Just cool to see and. I've always been a big fan of that first day or that first hit. From my perspective, and this is Jace Peterson, you know, we've got family and friends watching if they could make the game. So many times a guy gets called up and, I mean, it's it's within 12 hours of when they played and all of a sudden you're, you're trying to get them back to the big leagues or to that big league park. And so to make that moment special is, you know, because you know at home they're, they're biting nails, they're nervous, they're having a party. Yeah. You know, it's an exciting time for that family. And a ground ball that's hit to second. Dean Anna is there. He's been busy today, and Tui Valala gets the first. The strength of the Cardinals this year undoubtedly could be their bullpen. Trevor Rosenthal, Walden, Manus, no particular order. Broxton, Segrist, O, oh, who we saw today. Tyler Lyons out of options. You would think he would make it. And then you have some of the others like Tui Valala that... You know, if you're on a lesser team, lesser organization, he's in their bullpen. He might be closing. I was going to say, he might be your closer. Right. The converted infielder to the 
pitcher's mound really working on a two seamer he said this spring. He can flat out bring it. Big kid. How'd you like to be a right handed hitter. Nope. And they said hey by the way he's working on a two seamer heads up. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> I remember those days. I like it up here a little bit better sometimes. Uh huh. One ball one strike. That's it out of play. Tui Valala has been up and down last couple of years. There's actually a game last year City Field that they forced him to throw a pitch that he was uncomfortable with just to make him do it in a game in a live game in City Field. Ooh, nasty pitch. But the idea was you can't just come in throw a hundred because these guys will catch up. Oh, yeah. Everybody can hit a fastball. So he's trying to get him to throw off speed right there. Mm -hmm. Didn't really want to. Three and two. I'm not buying 91 on the radar gun right there. No sir. That ball almost took the catcher's arm off. <laughs> Three two pitch. There's Dean Anna again. There's two outs. Our Budweiser player of the game. Let me guess. Sierra. Shocked, aren't you? I'm shocked. Happy for him. Two for four. So RBI. Take a picture of that and send it to him. First day in the big leagues. Wear number 98. That'll change. It'll change. Hopefully it does. They're clapping for him. You can see his body, too. I mean, he's going to put on muscle. He's going to get bigger. He's going to grow into that body. I, I like it. I like what I've been watching today. There's Here's a baseball one. floating around up here. I noticed that, too. I was wondering what you were pointing at. You could ask for autographs every once in a while. I noticed that. You're fairly popular down there. I thought you were pointing in my... I thought I was missing something on my iPad. Just the guy's hand right in front of us. <laughs> Here's the 0-2. Wow. Hey, the umpire has been fooled on a couple of these. I've been kind of wondering where the strike zone's been the last couple days. Mm. Seems like it's been a little smaller than I can remember. For spring training, too. Here's a 1-2. And a base hit. Don't get the call, then you see that happen. Extends the ball game. That's Lolly. And they will have a pinch runner. It's Castro as the pinch runner. 13 pitches so far for Sam Tui Valala. And here is Darno at the plate. The first pitch is a ball outside. Two outs, runner at first. The one run lead. Two and zero. Oh. Umpire's not ready to go home yet. Seeing the reaction of. Tui Valala, the infielders as well. They thought it had called third strike in the previous hitter. They're heading to the towards the dugout. <laughs> wow. At three and zero, he does not want to put that man in scoring position. How quickly things can change! One pitch, changing the entire inning. And he walked him. It's a smart move here by Fryer to go out and visit. 
you know, you think about it, if you're Tui Valala and you're in this spot, these are important outings for him. You know, for a lot of guys, it's not a big deal. It's a tune-up. You're getting work in. He's trying to make this club. These are big, big outings. Even though it's late in the game and long game, it's still a safe situation, and you still got to come in there and with that mentality and, and really shut the game down. So Dansby Swanson, who has a single to left, former number one overall pick, ground ball and a foul ball. Mm. Tui Valala last year. Hitters only hit 176 against him at Memphis. 228 in St. Louis, but only in 14 and two-thirds innings. It's 17 saves for the Memphis Redbirds. 0-1 pitch. 0-2. And again, the Braves down to their final strike. Swanson, what are you looking for, you think, here? You got, I got to look fastball. But I think this is one of those situations where you're just staying on the ball, trying not to swing at a bad pitch. You got to kind of be in the middle with your body where you can handle the fastball and yet still be able to get to the slider if you need to. 0-2, oh, hit out Just of like that. Yep. Not too fast. Not committing fully to the heater where you can just trying to jump all over a fastball so much that you're out of control and you're just swinging at anything that's thrown up there if it's off speed. This is really the toughest part about hitting is when you got a guy with some velocity with a second pitch where you need to speed up just enough to catch up to that fastball, but you got to find a way to be in, in control for the off speed. 0-2 again. I think Fryer's going out to talk to Tui Valalogs exactly what you're saying at this point. Well, and he's also going out there to see what he's comfortable throwing. You know, he's had a tough inning. Looking in, looking out, you're looking at two different angles. You might see something that maybe he's not seeing, Sam's not seeing. But I think more or less you're going out there so you're not having to make him think too much. You just basically say, what do you think, what do you want here? So I don't have to put a bunch of signs down. We saw him try to go to the breaking stuff earlier and kept shaking to the fastball. 0 2. Jammed him. And then he get a nasty sinker. Can he get him? He does. This game is over. And the Cardinals hold on 4 3. That was a nasty pitch. But that's the story today, Mr. Sierra. Great job today. He just came out, come out of nowhere. Throw a jersey on your back and go out there and play like it's no big deal. But uh, a lot of these young guys with a lot of energy usually make that transition pretty quick. A lot of fun to watch. So Sierra and the Cardinals hold on. 4-3 the final. We'll wrap it up in just a moment. The Cardinals pick up a victory here at Roger Dean Stadium.